Zapier is an incredibly powerful tool for automating our Notion workspaces, integrating them with other apps, and ultimately establishing a cohesive system to streamline our workflow. But one limitation of Zapier's Notion integration is its inability to update relation properties in Notion databases. But with the Code by Zapier feature, we can make a call directly to the Notion API and thus update relation properties and automate every component of our workspaces and our workflows. So let's walk through the configuration using a hypothetical scenario and members of Notion A to Z will have access to the demo databases as well as the Zapier template. And if you haven't yet joined Notion A to Z, I encourage you to join us so that you can master and make the most of Notion. So you'll want to be familiar with the basics of Zapier for this tutorial. If you're new to Zapier, I recommend starting with some of my introductory tutorials. And for this configuration, we're going to use a hypothetical scenario where we have a very simple contact form with just two fields. We have a full name field, and then we have a country field where you can choose a country from a dropdown. And over in Notion, we have a submissions database. So Zapier is going to receive the submissions of that form by webhook and then use the information provided in that webhook to populate the submissions database. And you can see that the submissions database has two properties. The title property is for the full name. And then the country property is a relation that relates to the country's database. So this is where users have typically encountered an obstacle with Zapier. We haven't been able to populate this relation property, but using the code by Zapier action, we're going to be able to do so. So over in Zapier, our Zap is triggered by a webhook. When the form is submitted, it sends a webhook, and within a query string, it includes the values of full name and country. So within our test data here, you can see that we have full name and country. And then our second step and first action is to create a database item. Now for this, we're just using Zapier's standard Notion integration. It creates a database item and we have it configured for the submissions database. And then it populates the full name property with the value received for full name in the webhook. So this is business as usual, the standard Notion integration for Zapier. We create a database item and we populate the full name property, which is the title property. And then our third step, second action, is going to search a Notion database for an item. This is still business as usual, the default Notion integration with Zapier. In this case, we're using the country's database. And right here, I have the ID of the database entered. And we're going to search the country property, which is the title property within the country's database. And we're going to use the value for country supplied by the webhook. So this is going to return the ID of the country's page, which we'll use in our next step. So this is where the magic happens. This is where we're able to extend the functionality of Zapier and update a relation property in Notion. Here we have a code by Zapier action. And for the event, we have run JavaScript. So before we get into the action, what we need to do is configure a custom internal integration within Notion because we need to retrieve a token that will allow this step to integrate with Notion. So at notion.so slash my dash integrations, you're going to have the ability to create that custom integration. You'll click new integration and each integration is associated with a particular workspace. So I recommend beginning the name of the integration with the name of that workspace. So in this case, we're going to use W not OS. And then you can use an identifier for the purpose of the integration. In this case, we can say extend Zapier. We'll scroll down and you want to make sure that the workspace is selected where it says associated workspace and then submit. 
And that's going to give us that token that we'll use within the code by Zapier action. So if you click show and then copy, you can copy that token and return to Zapier. So when you configure your code by Zapier action, you'll have the opportunity to supply input data. And we're going to use four inputs. And each input has a key and a value. And you want these keys to be exactly as I've entered them because the code that we use below is going to reference them character for character. So we're gonna have updated page written in camel case. And the value of updated page is going to be the ID of the page that's created in step two. And then property name written in camel case is going to be the name of the relation property that you're updating. In our case, it's country. And then related page, again, in camel case, that's going to be the ID of the page with which you're populating that relation property, the page that you're relating to the updated page. So that's the ID of the page that's returned in our find action. In this case, it's going to be the country. And then the token is that token that you copied within your custom integration. So those are all the unique variables that you'll need in this step. The rest you can just copy and paste. And as I said, this code is going to reference those variables. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll find this code ready for copying and pasting within the Notion VIP article that's a companion to this video, which I've linked to within the video description. So once you've configured your input data and pasted the code into the code field, you can test your zap. And when you do, it's going to populate your submissions database with the related country. And once you've implemented this demo successfully, you can take this code by zap your step and apply it to your other zaps used to automate your Notion workspaces so that you can really maximize the efficiency and the power of Notion and Zapier working in tandem. So give it a go and let me know on YouTube or Twitter if you hit any snags.